Hello everyone. Welcome to Professor 3 Mac. Today I have come up with a very interesting video on how to use an AI which is called ChatGPT which is all over the place in the world in news media everywhere and if this can this tool can be used in the world of FEA which is finite element analysis. So what I'm going to do today in this short video is I will show you kind of a step by step demonstration on if we can find the answers to these questions. So can it replace FE analysis? How correct is its technical knowledge? So if we ask a technical question, can it generate a reply which makes sense, which is correct enough? What are its current limitations? So we're going to look at that from the perspective of FEA and especially Abacus finite element software. How can a FEA person use it in a positive way? So can we use it for our help can we save some time by using this tool so again we're going to examine that and then is it even that useful currently in its current state because it is only trained uh, with the data which is which is up to december 2021 according to them so is it really useful with the data it has been trained upon or it needs more data to get more sort of a correct information from our perspective as fea engineers analysts or experts so let's jump into it. So if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, it's an OpenAI code, which is made by a company called OpenAI. Again, you can search on the internet about that. It's based on neural networks. And you can basically chat with it and find answers to your questions. It can help you write your reports in a way that you give the task a text and it can rephrase it for you. It can write it in a very creative way as well. So it can save you some time. And people are using it for all sort of negative stuff as well, which I am against. I'm just going to show you if we can use it in a positive way, what sort of limitations it has in terms of giving us the guidance or answers to our questions. So let's start with it. Again, you can look at some of the examples, how you can start with. There are capabilities of the software and also limitations and it gives incorrect information. They already are saying that it can also give harmful instructions and bias contact, content. So again, you should be careful when you are using such kind of code. Okay, so let's jump into it now. Let me start with something more simpler. So let's start with if it can answer the general generic question we have about FEA. So let's say some one of my subscriber ask a question that uh, what is the difference between machine damage model and Johnson and Cook. So let's say we ask this question and see what sort of information it can provide us about these. Remember that the, the model is trained until the data from the everywhere if, until 2021. So anything out beyond that it cannot really recognize or give you answers to. So let's look at this now. Machine damage model and these are both constitutive models, correct? To describe behavior of materials and their high strain rates. I think high strain rate is plausible here. You should be careful. Johnson and Cook, yes, is for dynamic loading, but machine you can use for other loadings as well, I think. In a way, both can be used in lower strain rates as well. Okay, so machine damage model is phenomenological model that describes the damage to a material as a function of plastic strain and hydrostatic pressure. Again, this is incorrect. If you remember, machine damage model is based for mainly for fiber reinforced composites and it accounts for failure in the mat composite material based on fiber and matrix failure under tension and compression. So it has all those criteria there. So be careful when you're using this kind of code. And Johnson Cook model is a more complex model that describes the deformation of failure, um, failure, deformation and failure of materials under high strain rates. The model includes several parameters that are described to define strain rate sensitivity, thermal softening, hardening, blah, blah. Uh, it is mainly used for brittle and ductile materials. Again, brittle material is plausible. Johnson Cook is generally used for metals. And rest of the stuff seems appropriate again. So you have to be careful what is you are getting and what is not. Hashin damage model is at the end, it says in summary, the Hashin damage model is simpler and more focused on ductile materials, which is not correct, while the Johnson and Cook model is more complex and can be used for brittle and ductile materials. So again, you can see there are statements which can have error and which can be dangerous. So be careful when you are using it. So let's say we challenge the, the chat GPT and we ask more, for more information. Can you 
please i'm saying please provide more information on this let's see what it does for us no so it is thinking still thinking trying to get the data or generate replies sometimes it takes longer as well if the question is really tricky or something right on, on this scale it should have been straightforward but let's wait sometimes the servers are overloaded as well So as you see now it has generated started to data and try it will try to give more information to us so machine learning model is phenomenological model that describes this again hydrostatic pressure the model assumes that damage amortization is caused by accumulation of voids and material wrong and that the rate of damage accumulation is proportional to plastic strain and hydrostatic stress wrong and uh, the machine damage model is scalar damage model no uh, with the, which means it can only consider damage in material but not the orientation of damage again fibers are there so i think there, there is a lot of issues here as you can see so be careful when you are trying to ask very specific and highly technical questions and also it is not telling you that okay that the, that johnson cook model is only used for metals and machine damage model is mainly used for fiber reinforced composites this was the idea when these models were made in 1970s and 1980s so um, i will not really rely on this and this thing for my case also another important thing is it does is not providing you any information on the sources where it is taking all this information because the data it had never had any sources so let's see can you provide sources for about information and you will see what it will reply Okay, I will just stop generating first and then I will click on this. So it says, I, I apologize, as an AI, I do not have specific sources to cite the information provided is general knowledge and it's various from various sources, but machine damage is described in the okay. So it's giving you one paper and it's giving you the paper for the other source, but it says you have to search out the papers on your own and again. You, I can clearly say that the whatever it has written above are not the information from these papers because those papers, as you can see, the title of the first paper, uh, it's it's not the the actual paper which is basically based on machine damage model. So they have a, another paper which had that definitely. Mm -hmm. So again, you see, you have to be really careful when you are using it. Okay, we go one step forward and we say, okay, can we, can you generate abacus input files? for us again it's all text based so we can't give it a model so we need to look for a simple models to see how it works okay so it says i can certainly provide you an example of an input file for a specific simulation how we're creating a valid input file for specific request in-depth understanding of the problem and material as well as a previous so again it's a specialized topic so it, it basically says that i can provide some examples uh but you have to be careful because it's a very specialized topic. So it is already admitting, which was at the start as well, I told you there are limitations. And it is generating some kind of uh, generic file with nothing, no information into it. So, and again, the syntax looks okay to me. Again, the element type is looking okay to me, but end part, end part doesn't. So material definition is fine. Section allocation is fine. It's assigning the section material properties. It's creating an assembly based on the parts it's only one part here it doesn't end instance or end assembly in this case so again you will be understood you see that okay there will be a problem there static step is fine outputs are fine and step and now an assembly comes which is not correct because an assembly should be above the step definition to be complete so there are there are problems with the syntax in this input file which is generic file. So let's see if we ask it, can you generate an abacus input file for a uni real test? 
for linear elastic material. So if you remember from my simulation videos on my channel, if you go back and look at that, for uniaxial case, when we are identifying material parameter, we create a cube and then we mesh it with one element and then we fix three faces in one direction, in the orthogonal directions to those faces and we keep two faces free and pull from one face, right? So we, we replicate kind of a uniaxial condition and then we identify the parameters. So again, you can go back to the, my channel and look at different videos on that. So let's see if it can generate the similar sort of thing. Or you can also use uh, truss elements because that can also deform in axial direction if you have truss element in 1D and then you can use that as well to identify the parameters. But let's see what it does for us in this, in this case. So it's still thinking from its data which is just trained against and see if it can generate a reply here. And also if you change the syntax of the question, I have found out that you will get a very different response as well. So again, asking the question in a way that you get your own response is, is very important that you should rephrase or phrase your, your thing as well. But here I think it is gonna, it's not generating anything. Okay, it's generated part name, now it generates four, three nodes. So it has generated three nodes now, although it's using a beam element. So it's a, it must be a quadratic beam element maybe. So it's using a beam element to replicate the uniaxial test and beam element is for bending and shear sort of thing. So mm, I don't know, you can't use that in my opinion, but you should have used a truss element. So you have to look at the B31 formulation. I am not really aware, but this might not be correct. Also syntax wise, you it already has assembly, but it didn't create any part there and it has not assigned the material properties yet the load is there which is zero right now so you need to change the load based on your loading case and an assembly is at the end mm, so it's not really no i will not rely on this to generate input files for me so i will not doing that again it will give you all, all sort of statement that what you can change and it's just an example and you have to change all these things based on your own simulation and and that will include output request, so you have to change the output request based on what you require. So I think it has very limited knowledge based on the training data it had on Abacus input files. So yeah, so be careful when you are using it. So, and it says that then it is important to consult with simulation expert or professional who has experience using Abacus before attempting to create an input file or perform a simulation, even if you do it yourself. So you have to consult me. I'm not saying that I am the best, but I'm just joking. Anyway, so so there is a limited knowledge here. I, I will not gonna use it for, for this kind of thing. Let's see something else. Can it give us generic reply if we are stuck somewhere in our model? And it can give us some ideas to check before we go to some expert and, and take their time. If like I get a lot of response uh, emails or messages from different people about their error messages. So let's start with something. Okay, so one of the areas can you suggest how to remove error? Abacus error, let's see. And then in, I will press shift and then press enter and I can give the error message. So one of the error messages Abacus error and it says too many things needed. Convert or something during the static. So let's see what it does for. So now, as you can see, the it has started to generate the replies. So Abacus said are two main increments you convert typically when solver is unable to convert on solution within maximum number of increments. And these are several ways to resolve this. Increase the number of increments if you remember. In the step definition, there is a maximum number of increments. So you can increase that. If you give 100 and it requires 1000 increments, then it's going to stop at that point. So maximum increment parameter needs to be increased. Decrease the load steps. So you need to increase the load steps. Check the boundary conditions are consistent. Again, all these things are required. Material properties are very important. If your material properties are defined in such a way that your loading takes the material to a strain or stress state, which is not defined in the material properties, then you will have a convergence problem. Element type, 
you have to check is, are these elements suited for that specific problem so the, it is suggesting some generic replies but which is a very much can be usable if you are familiar with Abacus. Check for singularities, like if you have rigid body motions or a lot of deformations going on in static analysis. So it is suggesting a lot of things, but again, these are generic reply. Now you can compare this with my crappy video on how to remove this too many increment error in Abacus. I have a video on that and see and compare how I explained this thing and how this AI tool chat GPT is replying to you and suggesting to you in a way to solve your problems. Also, I think it is useful in a way that you can use for these kind of helps when you are stuck somewhere but you should not expect that it will do everything for you and also when you are trying to find answers to questions whether you are trying to find a shortcut for your reports or for your questions from exams or assignments then i think you you will definitely be careful and i think ethically it's not correct as well but in any case it is a good tool in my opinion uh, from that perspective so what else we can do with it i mean another thing is basically if so again it always says it's concerned with the experts and professionals like me i'm just suggesting that so because it just didn't want to take the responsibility of anything so it gives you like nine ideas i think one of them which should work for you in my opinion but again you have to be careful it depends on the model type as well let's try something else now some more technical information so let's say if i ask a question that how we can model a wind turbine blade in abacus let's see what it does with that if somebody asks you a question how you can model that in abacus so it's a complex task it is involved simulating the aerodynamic and structural behavior of the blade and the various loading again it's giving you some generic ideas you have to create a geometry which you can create in CAD software so again and then you can import it in abacus which is the step we normally do for complex geometries then you do meshing which you, again you can do in abacus or you can do it in the CAD software as well you define the material properties again it is not telling you which material properties you have to use which models you have to use to specify the boundary conditions so again it's giving you generic steps which again i explain in every specific problem case so these are the steps you have to follow which is pretty much okay i think for for the data it might have and what sort of information you can take so you can also write in a generic way but for specific problems i think you're gonna start so for example yeah and then post processing the data may require more detail and specific approaches so it's a complex structural simulation that requires this so again it says go to the experts or get some help or consult with the experts and professionals who are expert in in abacus or any other fp software so this was just kind of a brief overview on how you can use chat gpt with abacus again i will leave it for you guys to make an account and play around with this tool and see what sort of stuff you can do there are many videos on how to use chat gpt for other stuff so for example if you want to rephrase something from a literature you can just copy paste this and ask it to rephrase it will create some really nice rephrased paragraphs and sentences for you and it really changes every the way things are being written so for essay writing as a language tool it's very good but if you are looking for some information and answers to something then it might not have that correct data and it can give you very strange sort of instructions and information so you have to be careful with the limitations and you always check what you get out of it and can get the sources try to get the sources otherwise i mean you don't know you, what you are doing here so, so i hope this made some sense and you learned something about chat gpt and how it can be used positively for fea and abacus or any other fe software and if you have any more comments or any more ideas which i can try then please comment below and i will definitely provide my replies to 
that was or i will try to comment answer your questions or queries there so thank you again for watching this video and i will get back with some more interesting stuff in near future bye for now